Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. I have another Meals of the Week video for you. Now this particular video is going to be some really easy to make meals and also some snack ideas. We are in the middle of a really busy car season right now. Steven works in the car industry and we have three different car shows that we have to attend and he helps put them on. So we are living at the racetrack a lot this month. So my meals are definitely going to be geared towards easy to make, quick to make, and healthy and nutritious. So the very first meal that I am going to get started is I have some leftover ribeye steak from the weekend and I decided to make some steak quesadillas. So I'm just taking that ribeye steak and just thinly slicing it because what I'm going to do is just reheat this in a skillet with some butter. So I'm just adding some butter, getting it nice and melted, and then I'm going to add that ribeye steak. You could even add onions to this or even peppers if you would like and saute it all together. One of my friends, she is a gardener as well and she made some smoked red pepper chili flakes and she actually gave them to me this weekend so I used them in here and it was really really good. So I took two tortillas and I'm just buttering them. This is kind of like how I make grilled cheese as well. I kind of call quesadillas like a grilled cheese because it's the same kind of concept to make it. So I'm buttering both sides of the tortilla there and I'm adding some mozzarella cheese I did a combination of mozzarella and cheddar cheese and I'm just coating the bottom with the cheese and then I'm going to add the steak to it now if you saute it with onions or peppers you could definitely add that to this as well but these were for Steven so I was just making them very very plain so you're gonna put them in your hot skillet and just flip them these only take a couple of minutes per side to cook this one cooked a little bit longer than a couple minutes but usually your first one I always tend to burn so it's kind of like I call the first one like the experiment one <laughs> so what I did is I just made up a whole bunch of them and just cut them and into quarters and then just put them on the plate and then everybody that was eating here we, we are having friends stay with us right now so everybody that was eating was able to take as many as they wanted now I am making my special quesadilla I made this maple onion jam and it is so delicious so I thought I would actually add it to my quesadilla so I am layering the bottom with that cheese blend again and then putting the steak on and then what I'm doing is I'm putting this maple jam onion jam on mine oh it was so so delicious so I'm just gonna put the top back on and then we're just going to put the butter in the pan and get this nice and cooked on both sides until the cheese is melted you like I said before you really don't need to cook it more than just a couple minutes per side this is such an easy quick meal to make so because I was the only one that really kind of wanted this jam in mind I was able just to kind of separate mine from everybody else's so I'm cutting it into quarters for myself and then I'm going to put some of my freshly made salsa on the plate and some sour cream and it was such a quick, delicious meal. This meal is really good. If you have leftover chicken or steak, this meal is a perfect quick meal to make. For the next meal, we are going to not really make a meal. It is more of like a snack option, an appetizer. I love having this when I am kind of at the campground because then I have something really healthy option to have as a snack. I'm gonna make some traditional hummus. So I took a one 15 ounce can of my home canned chickpeas, just rinse them off really well and then put them into my food processor. Then I'm adding two tablespoons of tahini one tablespoon of olive oil, and then I'm going to add one tablespoon of lemon juice. The recipe that I originally was using suggested using freshly squeezed. I don't have it, so I just use bottled, and I always use bottled, and it works great. And then you are going to add two cloves of garlic. I just did like a teaspoon. I really like a garlicky hummus, so I added a little bit more. Then you're gonna take to start one tablespoon of water and two teaspoons of soy sauce and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Then you're gonna mix that up until it gets to the consistency that you like. If it is too thick, what I'm doing there is just adding a little bit more water. I actually ended up using about two tablespoons more water before it got to the consistency that I like. I like mine kind of half runny, half thick. Like it's, it is all personal preference. That's why it says to start with one tablespoon when making this. And because I was taking this out to the campground with me, I just put it into a to-go container. And then that red 
chili sauce, that sweet chili sauce that I can together with you guys. It's that really spicy, almost ketchupy tomato sauce. I ended up putting a little bit on top of this and it was so good. It was kind of like a spicy hummus. It was a really good option to have as a nice healthy snack. For the next meal, I am going to make a bacon potato quiche casserole. It's not really a quiche, it's more of a casserole. We enjoy this for either breakfast, brunch, or even dinner. On this particular night, I am making it for our supper. So what I did was I took about six medium sized russet potatoes. Actually, they weren't russet, they were just a white potato. And I just peeled them and cut them into about two to one inch cubes. You want them to be like bite sized. And then I've added them to a lined baking sheet here and just added a little bit of avocado oil. I probably added maybe about a quarter cup of avocado oil. I sprinkled it with some salt, pepper, and a little bit of smoked paprika. Kind of wanted to give them that smoked taste. I have my oven preheated at 400 degrees and I am going to cook these for approximately 30 minutes. I think that particular tray took about 45 minutes before they got nice and crispy. So on this particular night I am choosing to use some sausage. I'm using a spicy Italian sausage. You can actually use bacon in this or any type of like turkey sausage, anything like that. It's really versatile. Um, so I'm going to just cook up my sausage until it is completely cooked through. Then to a bowl I am adding one cup of whole milk and then eight eggs. My eggs were kind of on the small side plus I like to add a little extra eggs so I think in total I added about 10 eggs. Now you can also saute up an onion and add this to it. I just used granulated onion. I added a little bit of cayenne pepper and then some dried sage and dried thyme and then you want to also season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Once you get everything added in there just give it a little whisk and then you want to add about two cloves of garlic minced. I just added a teaspoon of the pre-minced stuff. And then you're going to add some cheddar cheese. The recipe says one cup of shredded cheese. I use probably about one and a half. That's usually what I like. I really like to eyeball the cheese because I love cheese and so I just add more than what it calls for always. <laughs> so once the potatoes are cooked, you're gonna take them out and you're gonna lower your oven heat to 350 degrees. You're gonna add them to a nine by 13 skillet and then you're also going to add that pre-cooked sausage that you cooked up or bacon if you're using it and then you're just going to stir it until it's all incorporated and then you want to take your egg and cheese mixture and just pour it over top of the potatoes and sausage and then just give that a stir so that the eggs are kind of mixed with everything else you want to cook this for approximately 30 minutes I think mine took about 45 minutes to cook you want to cook it until the center is no longer jiggly that's why I'm jiggling it a little bit there but this is such a delicious delicious meal this is actually a meal that you could make ahead of time and throw in the freezer and then just defrost it as a freezer meal it is really really good for that as well so this was a great meal to have on this night on this particular day, I needed to have a really kind of quick breakfast idea. So I am making my quick buttermilk biscuits. This recipe comes together very, very quickly. So to a large mixing bowl, I am going to add two cups of just an unbleached all-purpose flour, and then one tablespoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of sugar, I'm just using a organic sugar, and then one teaspoon of salt. You're gonna whisk that all together until everything is all incorporated, and then you're going to add in six tablespoons of cold butter. Mine is salted, but the recipe does stay for unsalted. I personally like the salted because I do like a more saltier biscuit, not so much sweet. So you're going to take your pastry blender and you're going to blend it up until it is a nice, almost like a crumbly consistency. You want to have little bits of the butter throughout your whole flour mixture. And then what you're going to do is stir in three quarters cup of a cold buttermilk. Now I didn't have buttermilk, so all I did is I took my regular whole milk and just added Added about a teaspoon of vinegar and I just let it sit until it kind of curdled a little bit and that's just how you make buttermilk. So once you add that buttermilk in you're just going to stir it until it is just combined and then pour it onto a floured surface 
And then all you have to do is just knee it until all of the dough comes together. You don't want to knee it too much because you really want to keep that butter in those biscuits nice and cold because that's what's going to give you a flaky biscuit. Just taking the dough and just rolling it out to probably about an inch thickness. The thicker the dough, the less biscuits you're going to get. Um, and then it does also change the cooking time. So I didn't went about an inch and then I have a biscuit cutter there and I am just cutting my biscuits out and putting them onto a lined baking sheet. I have my oven preheated at 450 degrees. Once I'm done cutting all of the biscuits, I'm going to take a little bit of that reserved buttermilk and I'm just going to brush it on top of the biscuits. You want them just to be good and coated. This is what kind of gives them that beautiful brown coating on them. And then again, depending on your thickness, because I went about an inch thick, these took about 17 minutes to cook and then they puff up beautifully. These are so delicious, hot out of the oven with butter and jam. Such a good breakfast idea. For this recipe, I am going to make a tomato pie. We have been drowning in tomatoes lately and surprisingly, I have not made one tomato pie this year yet. So I decided tonight was gonna be the night and I was gonna make it. We were barbecuing some pork shoulder. I've actually showed you guys how we make our pork shoulder. It is so delicious. If I can find the video, I will reference it for you. So we were having that as our main meal and I thought a tomato pie would go perfect with it. So what I'm doing is just thinly slicing some of my garden fresh tomatoes and I'm just laying them on top of some paper towel here. You want to lay them in a single layer and then you're going to sprinkle them with approximately two tablespoons or two teaspoons of salt because you want them to kind of get rid of most of their moisture. You don't want them too liquidy because it results in a really soggy pie. So you want to make sure that you're doing this for at least an hour. I did not let my tomatoes um, soak for long enough so it was a little bit of a runny pie but still tasted amazing. So what you're gonna do halfway through, so about 30 minutes, you're gonna come and you're gonna flip these tomatoes over. You're gonna change out that paper towel to some clean paper towel, like dry paper towel, and then let them sit for another 30 minutes. So while they're soaking in the background there, I am going to make the sauce for the tomato pie. What I'm doing is taking one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, one cup of my homemade mayonnaise, and then you actually can add finely chopped onions into this, or like I did, I just used some of my homemade fresh onion powder. And then it does call for freshly chopped parsley and basil, but I didn't have any, so I just used some of my dry stuff and it tasted perfectly fine. I had pre-made a pie crust, and so now I'm just gonna roll it out so that it will fit into my pie plate. I have the oven preheated at 350 degrees. Once I get the pie crust all rolled, I'm gonna put it into my pie plate and then just kind of flute the sides of the pie. I am not an expert at fluting. I definitely need to work on it a little bit more. So <laughs> mine was definitely homemade looking. Once you get your pie plate prepared, you're gonna take your tomatoes and just kind of dab them just to get any more of that excess moisture out of them. And then you're going to layer them into your pie plate. And just you're gonna fill it until you have it almost to the top and then you're gonna take that cheese mayonnaise mixture and just cover the top of the pie with it you're gonna bake this in the oven for approximately 40 minutes and you definitely want it to cool completely before you cut into it because if you don't let it cool completely then unfortunately it does result again in a little bit of a soggy pie but this is one of my most favorite summertime treats I love this tomato pie I have left the recipe below for for you guys in the video description just because I don't have a linkable recipe for you and this is such a good summertime treat especially if you are drowning in tomatoes. For the next recipe, I am going to make a sweet treat. I woke up on this particular day craving chai. I wanted a chai tea and I wanted something sweet also. So I found a recipe online for a chai snickerdoodle cookie. So I was all about making it on this particular day. So in this small mixing bowl here, I added two cups of sugar, two teaspoons of a ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground cardamom, and half a teaspoon of ground allspice. And I'm just whisking it together and just making sure it gets completely fully incorporated. 
I was also probably whisking it a little bit longer because that cardamom just smelled amazing. So I was just breathing in <laughs> the scents while I was whisking it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a half a cup of this particular sugar mixture and put it into a shallow mixing bowl and then just set those both two bowls aside. Then to a large mixing bowl, you are going to add one cup of butter softened. I actually used softened butter this time and definitely recommend making sure that it is room temperature. Then you're gonna add that sugar cardamom mixture to it and then you're going to mix it for approximately five to seven minutes until it is nice and fluffy. To that bowl you are going to add two large room temperature eggs and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and then you want to whisk that until again it is nice and fluffy. It just takes a couple minutes just to get that good and incorporated. Then to a separate smaller bowl, I just used the bowl that I had my sugar in just repurposing less dishes. <laughs> you are going to add two and three fourths cup of an all-purpose flour. I am just using an unbleached all-purpose flour, works great. And then to that flour, you are going to add two teaspoons of cream of tartar, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one eighth teaspoon of salt. I just eyeballed it one eighth and just added about a pinch in. So then you're going to just kind of whisk that all together just to get that incorporated. And then you're gonna add that to your wet ingredients. Now, when you add it to your wet ingredients, you're just gonna kind of do it slowly. That way it doesn't kind of all just explode up at you when you're mixing it in. You wanna just mix it until it is just incorporated. You don't wanna over mix it because that will result in more of a tougher tasting cookie. Then once you have everything all incorporated, you're gonna take that shallow bowl of that sugar spice mixture. And then you're going to take your cookie dough and roll them into little balls. Now, the bigger the cookie you want, the bigger balls obviously you're gonna make. I was going for more of like a medium sized cookie, so that's the size that I was making. Once you get it rolled up, you're gonna take it and kind of roll it around in that sugar. Make sure that that sugar mixture gets on all of the cookies. I also have my oven preheated at 350 degrees. So once I get them all put into that bowl, I'm just gonna come and just kind of lightly squish them down just to get a flatter cookie. And then you are gonna cook these for approximately 10 to 13 minutes or until the edges begin to brown. Then it says to let them cool for two minutes before removing to wire racks. These cookies were so, so delicious. We actually have friends staying with us right now and they all said they, they loved the cookies. It kind of reminded them of a uh, ginger snap in a way. And I think that ginger kind of stood out. So that is going to be the last meal for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. It was kind of more of snacky foods than our real meals. Once we get through our busy car show season, I will be back to making my regular, more hearty meals, especially now that we are getting into fall. I really tend to lean on my pantry foods a lot more. So I hope you guys have a great day or night whenever you're watching this, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys.